Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Doornail the Dead Horse and I'm going to be using him today to show off some different types of nose bands and bits and different types of equipment that we use to ride our horses and why I do or do not like it. So we're going to start off today with just a basic crank nose band. I have paired it with an elevator bit that I was using for another demo so I'll also demonstrate the function of the elevator bit but first we're going to focus on this crank nose band especially when it's over tightened. The reason why I show things when they're over tightened is because the incorrect use of an object is honestly the common use of it in a lot of areas of the horse world. There's not as many people who use these objects correctly in my opinion and in my experience. Okay, so this is it fitted fairly loosely, like I can almost fit two fingers in. It's just pushing it on like the end side of the two finger rule. But it still impacts the ability to open the mouth as wide, but it's not as bad. Like if we want it to stay up above because his head's a little small. So if it stays where it's supposed to without sagging down, his mouth can barely open. And now let's do it up tighter. I can only fit one finger under there and it's tight. Look, he can barely open his teeth. So if the bit is poking into the roof of his mouth or if the rider is pulling too hard and his bars are sore, he has no relief because he can just barely, he can open his teeth so little that I can just barely fit a finger in there. My issue with crank nose bends is how much they can be done up to the point where they're so tight that the horse cannot open their mouth because a lot of people are motivated to use them for that very purpose. So I'm not a fan of them because they can be easily abused. With that said, they do have a more even pressure along the face than other types of nose bends do because of the ability to crank them. So if they're fitted properly, they might be more comfortable for some horses than a regular cabisson nose bend due to um, them fitting more securely over the nose. With that said, like I always, if I use them, I do them up so loosely that they're basically functioning like a normal nose bend. I don't think they should ever be used to crank the mouth shut and I think you need to be really careful what type of bits that you pair these with because if you're pairing it with a bit like this elevator bit for example it's much more harsh that the horse has no ability to open their mouth like this is absurd um and again like people th there's enough space that I can fit fingers under the sides so people would work to justify a nose band that is fitted this tightly easily because it's not digging into the horse's face and restricting them to the point where you can like openly see it due to the indents on the face. So a lot of people would fit their nose bands like this. Um, even with it more lightly fitted, it did impact the ability to open the jaw. Now let's look at the elevator bit. I used to ride in one of these and I did so for a number of years and I rode in it because my off the track thoroughbreds were too strong towards fences and I couldn't manage them or slow them down. Um, <laughs> and it was me who needed the bit, not the horse, and I didn't need the bit per se, but I needed it to try to accomplish things at the impatient time frame I was trying to go at. So I would use this because my horse couldn't run through it as easily. It never actually addressed why my horse was rushing or why he was heavy on the bit or why he didn't have the greatest brakes. It simply just made the consequences greater for him if he ignored my hand. Um, and that's my issue with these. They're used to band-aid a lot of problems in training without actually addressing the underlying cause, which for horses with rushing can be due to stress, pain, discomfort, anxiety, even just like general lack of muscle and lack of um, coordination and just needing to get stronger. It can be caused by all those things. And when people put a bit on to try to fix that, it's bringing all that down simply, reducing it simply to just the horse deciding to be a certain way. And the belief that any little piece of equipment can completely fix a behavioral issue I think is just silly in itself, unless the equipment is about securing the horse's comfort. So the longer the shanks are on a bit, just to keep it nice and simple, the more amplified the pressure is going to be because it works as like a lever system. So I'm going to pull this back a little bit because this horse that we're modeling this on is a little guy so he's like a cob sized so we're gonna pull it back a little bit and i really just watch the pull piece when i pull back on the shanks watch where the what the pull thing does it comes forward and if you put a chin guard on these they can't rotate to the same degree meaning it would be less harsh with the pressure it puts on the pole but i would say the vast majority of people i see riding in these don't use a chin guard and i sure as heck didn't but you can see the cheek pieces tighten. So again, watch the cheek pieces tighten and it pulls the pull piece 
down onto the head. And yes, this isn't perfectly fitted to the horse, but you get the gist of it. It's pulling the pole piece down. And the angle and stuff for when riding is obviously not going to be the same because this is a literal horse head sitting on a table and I'm a person sitting in a chair and standing. But the mechanics of the bit are such that it is made to pull these little cheek pieces down when pressure is applied on the bit. So now, as you can imagine, if you're not riding in one of these with two reins, that means anytime you're putting any contact on your horse's mouth, you're also pulling their crown piece of their bridle into their pole. And if it's not a nice padded mono crown like this, it's going to be even more uncomfortable. But even with a nice padded one like this, you're still applying a lot more pressure than you think to one of the most sensitive areas of the horse's head. And now if you ride in two reins, it's better because you can stop the bit from over rotating as much, even if you don't put on a chin guard. Uh, but even still, it will still, anytime you're using the curb rein and not the snaffle rein, it's going to pull this pull part down. Riding with two reins makes it a lot kinder though because you're able to control how much pressure you're putting on the pole rather than just any time you touch the reins having it engage that part of the bit. So two reins is the way to go with a bit like this or at the very least a rein converter because it will alleviate some of the curb action by always engaging the snaffle in addition with it. So it'll be like 50-50 snaffle um, and the curb action. But two reins is the best because then you have full control over what you're actually doing. That's why I'm not the biggest fan of these guys because they're used on horses who get strong and out of control and try to run through the bit. And then you're just effectively causing more discomfort on the top of their head and inside their mouth to try to stop them from running through the bit. And you also commonly see these elevator bits paired with like flash nose bands or figure eight nose bands, meaning the horse is getting all that pressure applied to its pole um, and pressure amplified inside its mouth, but it can't open its mouth to escape any of that. So I just don't think it's the kindest thing. And I think it's evading a lot of steps in training. And I say that again, as someone who used to use it myself, and you can go back and look at my old videos and photos of me working with my off the track thoroughbred Dallas. Um, and in jumping videos, I'm riding in this bit in a lot of them. And the fact that I used to do it doesn't mean I have to support it now. If anyone's watching this uses this type of bit and I've said something that resonated with you, just know it's never too late to try to find a better option. And there's better options on the market that are kinder to the horse and less likely to be used, m misused or cause the amount of pain a lot of the bits on the market we see today do. I recommend checking out those. I am working with a bidding company called Horse Bit Barn. Um, it's a local bit fitter that I work with and I'm sponsored by her. I got sponsored by her last year. So I've been trialing a lot of the bits and she's been teaching me a lot about different aspects of bit mechanics and whatnot. So she's a great person to go to if you're having any issues with your horse, you wanna book a bit fitting consultation to try to address any of the issues you're having with your horse and get paired with a bit that works for what you need to do with your horse and any struggles you're having. I wanted to discuss why I'm not a fan of this bit. So as you can see, there's a lot of different joints. It's like a completely collapsible bit. The amount of joints mean that there's several pinch points in comparison to other bits with less joints. So the pinch points mean they can grab at the horse's lips and tongue. In addition to that, when you're riding, most riders don't have a perfectly even contact on either side. So even if they're not seesawing, there can be some slight back and forth action, which increases the amount of pinching and rubbing of the lips because the shape of these is also quite abrasive in the mouth. Like it's not a nice feeling. It's if you run your hand up and down, it, it like catches um, and pinches and it's not comfortable. Um, on top of that, because of it being this collapsible, your horse can't actually develop a true contact because anytime they try to connect and have contact with the bit and actually give you a feel of their mouth, the bit just collapses away from them. And that's really all that does is it stops them from having something to run through because there's nothing to lean on, but it's also pinching and grabbing at their mouth a lot and not teaching them to develop a real contact. This one is just a snaffle, but you can also see this mouthpiece paired with gags like this even, um, and all sorts of other different cheek pieces, which make it especially bad because if this is paired with a gag, it wraps around the tongue and then the pressure is amplified in the mouth and a along the pole, all while having all these pinch points. I'm gonna put it on my arm and just pull back because you'll see how it leaves dense. 
Yeah, and there's just little marks left in my hand and it's sore. Especially when this is in a tongue and a softer structure like that, it's gonna grab and pinch more and pull more. Um, and when I'm doing this to myself, the other important thing to consider is that I am applying the pressure myself. I'm aware of when it's going to be applied, the degree it's being applied to, and I can stop it at any point. Horses don't have the ability to do that. So the level of fear and stress and pain that they feel in comparison to us doing these tests on ourselves would be substantially more because because they're not in control. So this is the Milestone Harlow bridle from my brand. It's the bridle that I created for my mare Harlow because she had some pole sensitivity from being galloped at the racetrack in one of these bad guys. So anyways, I wanted to show the difference in the horse's ability to open and close the mouth in the nose bend. As you can see, there's a substantial difference in the ability to open and close the mouth. And it's because of the fact that the nose band attachment point is way over here. So you have this much nose band that's out in front where there's no attachment point. So this can't get anchored as well. So the horse is able to open their mouth more freely because the attachment point is set further back by their cheek rather than all around their mouth area. So it allows for more freedom of the mouth and it's also avoiding the cheekbones and other sensitive facial structures. Now, in addition to that, we have the mono crown piece that is shaped around the ears so that it's not going to curve into the ears. So when the horses flick their ears back to listen to signals, they're not just hitting a sharp edge of a bridle. So even in a, a elevator bit with this bridle, the pole piece would still get pulled down like that, but the padded would at least alleviate some of it when compared to a non-padded bridle. And this bridle not having a flash would allow the horse more ability to alleviate pressure themselves. I wanted to try to make this bridle basically impossible or very difficult to use improperly, even if someone jacked up the noseband way too tight. And the attachment point on that on these bridles makes it quite difficult to do that. So I feel like I've succeeded in that. The goal is just to provide a good looking anatomical bridle that essentially functions as if the horse wasn't wearing a noseband because we're not using these bridles to tie the mouth shut or for any purpose to try to keep the mouth quieter. They're simply for the look of that traditional bridle with a noseband rather than riding without one. And you're able to provide that for your horse without adding in any other discomforts from having it have a drop noseband or something that's restrictive. And that was the goal with these anatomical bridles. So as you can see, there's quite a difference in the movement of the mouth and you can see how it avoids the cheekbones with the shape of the nose band. And with the brow band, it's shaped around a lot of the sensitive areas. Some horses might need bigger brow bands to accommodate their facial structure and size so that it's not pulling into their temples. But these were all things that I considered. I just really wanted to make it flashless because flashes impact the horse's ability to properly avoid discomfort under saddle. So I literally do not own a flash, so we're going to use this piece of twine to represent a flash. This is a regular Cavasson nose bun, and as you can see, even two finger fitted, like a little on the tight end of two fingers, more like one and a half. But even with that, it impedes the ability to open the jaw more than my bridle does. And now let's add the flash and see how much this does it. The The general rule is the two finger rule for nose bands to keep it loose enough to be comfortable for the horse. So now when you tighten a flash with a loose nose band, the problem is it does pull the nose band down like this because of how the flash is anchored. So this means it can be putting pressure on this really sensitive nasal area like I mentioned. So we really want to make sure that the nose band doesn't sag that low, ideally. But anyways, on this bridle it's going to because this horse is little. Um, so we're just going to tie this up. So yeah, you can see how much this pulled the nose band down and then the horse's mouth is like effectively strapped shut. So we'll do it up looser this time. Keep this guy pulled back enough that, but yeah, so the flash is still impacting the ability to open the mouth. And now when these are done up too tight, which they are when they're done or used with the purpose of strapping the mouth shut, let's do it up too tight now. Too tight and the mouth literally cannot open. So that's where you get horses just going around like this with their teeth gritted and that's also a sign of discomfort or pain. So this is the new Western bitless bridle that I came up with for my company. I didn't realize until recently that so many Western products don't have a padded crown piece. 
So that was the first thing I did here was the padded mono crown with the cutouts for the ears. And then I also did the padded brow band and the padded nose band with all the fancy tooling. And then it's just a basic side pull where, one second, it's crooked, where you can just attach your reins to these little rings. And yeah, it rides basically like a halter. This one's much more secure than the Milo anatomical bitless bridle that I did because it's set up like a more regular Caveston nose band. You still want to make sure this is fitted properly. You don't want to fit it too tight. Again, like if you're fitting it loosely, this is how much ability the horse would have to open their mouth. You also don't want bitless bridles to sit too low because again, if it was sitting right here, you'd be pulling against that sensitive nasal bone, which is not what you want to do. So this one's going to be getting released later on in the summer. We have some pre-orders that people are waiting on. So anyone who pre-ordered will get theirs first. And this will be the next bitless style that we're releasing. So this is the rose gold version of my anatomical bitless bridle. The nose band is shaped very similarly to the English one with the, the English bitted bridle. Um, so it's made to stay off of the face, avoid the cheekbones, and not sit as directly on the face as a normal noseband. So it's really good for horses who have already been ridden bitless and are very soft and responsive to bitless cues because it lays off of the face more. So it can be a great choice for people who want to ride bitless but have a horse that doesn't like a traditional Cavasson noseband because of how it sits on their face. Uh, but with that said, it is less stable on the face than one that is anchored around like this and has a more consistent feel like a traditional cabasson. So I am coming out with a style that is more similar to a traditional cabasson side pull in addition to this one so that people can shop all those styles. But the reason for this was for horses who like going bitless but don't like the feel of a traditional bitless bridle side pull or the cross under style bitlesses that have too much chin pressure. The last thing I wanted to show is just this bit that I recently got from my bit fitter for Banksy's first bit when he's eventually started. Um, and also just one to use on other green horses. This is the Bomber Blue Molded Mullen. It's very flexible and it's really thin and low profile in the mouth for horses who have low palates and small mouths. So it works really nicely and it's super soft. So this is the type of mouthpiece that I would recommend for people who have horses that like a mullein mouth and are soft, but you don't want something that's super easy for them to lean on because this one's a little bit harder for horses to lean on because it is molded to the mouth and it's collapsible a little bit, but it is comfortable in the mouth and doesn't have as many of the same risk factors as a bit like the Waterford. So anyways, that's your crash course on some common types of bits that I don't like and different types of nose bands as well as introducing some of my new product line and why I was motivated to create it. I'm hoping that we'll start to see a shift in the horse world where there's less stuff on the market that's about making the horse do things based off of making them uncomfortable or in pain so that they answer quicker and that we start to kind of push away all the types of bits and training aids that are successful because of the discomfort that they cause. I would like to see kinder things on the market that are much more difficult to misuse and also don't rely on causing pain to have the horse respond. And that's what I was trying to do with my product line and we've just restocked the bridles. The new styles of the rose gold and the western ones will be in stock again sometime in the summer. We're going to be stocking them for the first time so stay tuned with that. But it's been a long time to get here and I used some of the equipment that I'm criticizing actively now. So I encourage all riders everywhere to reconsider the equipment that they're using and really make sure that they're aware of the mechanics and how they're actually acting on their horse, not just how the mechanics of the equipment cause the horse to respond to their cues. Because the horse responding quickly to your cues doesn't mean that that was obtained ethically or fairly. So that's something to consider. Trainability and their ability to answer and do what you want is not necessarily correlated with welfare and comfort. So it's our job to continually ensure that we're providing those things for them. So anyways, thank you for watching and you can check out these bridles as well as my base layers and some of the other summer shirts that I've been releasing on the MR Equestrian website. It's linked down below in the description. Please check it out. There's a lot of fun apparel options and saddle pads and we're having some pretty big sales on styles that we've had in for longer and we're going to be releasing some more of the tack and equipment as the summer goes on. So stay tuned for that and please check this out. I've tried to keep the prices affordable for all types of budgets and we do ship worldwide. So thank you again for watching and I hope that this was informative and helps people understand um, bridles and bits a little more.